Hello once again everyone, another week, another bonus video. So today we are going to be starting on a series, which is going to be the guards and what they do. So what are what is the objective of this series and, and what are we going to cover? The objective of this is for, it was requested by my guys, um, we're going to be covering just a brief, quick refresher on here's this position, here's what you can do out of it. I'm not going to go over all the plays that go out of it, and I'm also not going to stick just to Longsword. We're starting with Longsword because that's what most of my guys do, but we'll be branching out into other systems that we teach and study. So, the guard we're going to be starting off with is Vamtog. Of course we're going to start with Vamtog. So, Vamtog is one of the more varied guards. It can be held in a bunch of different ways, depending upon what system you're studying, and even what you're looking to achieve. So. It is generally characterized by the sword is going to be held high on the dominant side of your head, both hands on the sword, and you are going to have your non-dominant foot in front, your dominant side back. That allows you to cut with the entirety of your body as you step forward or otherwise engage your hip. That's basically Vamtag. Now, Vamtag can have many variations. For example, this is my general fighting Vamtag. I have the shilt up by my ear, my elbows are tucked in, my posture is upright, and I'm ready to cut. However, you will also see Vamtag held, for example, you can lower the arm down a little bit, you will see Vamtag held here. This one is one I don't recommend you do. Um, now, laying the flat on your shoulder is a heck of a lot safer than putting the edge on your shoulder, but this is a rest position. If you're doing this, you're just slowing yourself down. Uh, from here, however, you do, some people will advocate you use this position because it allows you to execute thumb grip techniques a little bit faster because your thumb is already on the blade. Alternatively, it lends itself into a very fast thrust because you're essentially just whipping it off your shoulder. So I'll point out, you can do all of those things from here with just a little bit of training. And it's actually more deceptive because, am I in the thumb grip? Did you know? You didn't, right? But, all that aside, you will see people holding this guard. If you want to, you can play around with it. I would say use it as a rest position, right? Or to deceive your opponent. For example, if I'm out of distance and I wanna just chill out for a minute and not give away much, I will drop down to this guard and I will just hold here for a bit and play with distance via footwork. That's okay. Beware though about holding Vamtag down here. So important thing, the shilt, the strong, is what protects you. If someone tries to cut through my shilt, it's not gonna happen. So if they're cutting from my head, I would like that strong thing to be up by my head. If I lower my arms down, that moves very easily. So even if your sword is where it should be, I can blow through that and hit you with both my sword and your sword, and that is not pleasant. So the further down your arms go, the weaker that tip becomes, and honestly, the less it's doing for you. So keep them up above level of your chest. Now, you also see sometimes Vamtag depicted up here, or sometimes even separately called high Vamtag. Also see it sometimes over to one side, which um, can look a decent amount like Judon. But both these are still completely fine. You'll even see some where the tip is back behind. It's all, all good. Up here, you are much more mobile, because I can defend both sides. I can cut from any side I want to do. It's very easy for me to launch into kind of anything I want. And so, Usually when I want to do something more grandiose or I'm more focused on a group fight, as this is usually the one I go for against more than one person, up here is where I want to be. It also has an intimidation factor. Um, if you need to run down some time in a tournament and you're fighting somebody who you've already made afraid of you, just pop up into this. That will cause them to back up. But just be aware if they don't, because you are quite open to thrusts. So you will see... High Vamtag held, you'll see it with both feet forward. It's a very symmetrical guard because the guard is just right above my head and I'm still able to defend myself. So that's one version of it. You also sometimes see it held back behind you. Now, this is where it branches into Zornhut slash Posta di Dona, which I'm going to include under Vamtag because they're so similar. But essentially, you just take your normal Vamtag and you just fold your body back. Now, what this does is one, it takes me a little bit out of presence, which is a good thing. Two, 
my core is now twisted up and ready to launch out with quite a bit of strength. My sword is held up behind me, so that way I can extend it with quite a bit of force, and it can't be intercepted, because I can still just turn back and keep it here, but here is going to allow a little bit more muscle engagement. Now, important note, when you are here, you need to be here only in the moment you're going to do something. Here, I can be deceptive, I can move around. This is not terribly mobile, so I'd recommend if you're going to use it, make sure that it is one of those moments where you're walking into distance, you set yourself, and you let them come in, or you're going in. This is not something you want to stand in for long periods of time. Now, you'll notice that my feet are twisted backward. That is because from here, you're going to be using a volta stable, or a shift of weight, essentially, at the same time you turn your feet to engage. This is an alternative to a passing step. So if I'm here, in my normal Vomtag, and I want to attack, I can do it without stepping forward, but usually I'm in line, so I want to step forward. With this, I am going to be using the turning and pushing of my weight at the same time as I cut out. This brings my hip engaged and basically does the same thing as a passing step. Why would you do that as opposed to passing? Stylistically in some regards, because Fiore advocates that more than he does the initial passing step. But what it does is it essentially, it changes the order of when you'll need to do things. If I pass forward with my initial action, my next action will require footwork of this line, right? Of this type, rather. Versus if I don't pass my initial action, my next can have a much bigger step. So you can think of it as reserving your passing step for a ladder action. And depending upon what you're doing, you may even blend them. For example, when I launch into my Zornhut, I will set myself, launch out powerfully, and then let this carry me forward into my follow-up action, continuing with it. Important thing to remember is that when you widen up your guard like this, right, and that's not to say you can't do this without the Volta Stable, you will see depictions of this, make sure that you are not cutting wide. You wanna be cutting at a 45 or a 30. So even if I've got it up on my shoulder, it's there, it's coming straight down, or as straight as I can. Now, other instances you'll see of Vumtag are going to be it held on the left side, of which there are a couple different variations, but generally you will see Posidona Sinestra, you will see just left Vumtag, or like I said, high Vumtag can basically be left Vumtag if I just put my other foot forward. Important thing to remember on this side is that your reach is just a tiny bit shorter and your cuts are not as powerful because you're not lined up both hands with your core anymore. They're going away from it. So usually if you, as the masters say, if you are right of hand, do not fence out of left. However, something to be aware of, if someone is folding up into left, be aware that quite a few people will like to rest on their shoulder. I even do this. I'll put the flat onto my shoulder and from here I will instead launch out a short edge cut. So rather than launching long, I just fire that short edge straight out. That is something to be aware of because if you're not looking for it, it can be quite hard to parry. And it's very good for taking hands. So if you see this, especially if I'm doing it to you and I'm telling you this so that people challenge me and I have to make it better, watch out for that guy. But so what can you gen, we've gone over kind of what Vomtag is and a little bit of what you can do of it, but what is its main purpose? Vomtag is really kind of the do everything guard. There's nothing you shouldn't be able to do with about two exceptions, just because they come from below specifically. So out of here, I can launch an Unterhau, I can launch an Oberhau, I can launch all of my Meisterhau, regardless of what they are, without difficulty. Um, the only thing I can't really do out of here would be a short edge rising cut because I'm already up here. So really, you can launch all of your cuts, and of course you can still launch a thrust. Even though the tip is back, it's still very easy for me to launch a thrust out without much difficulty. It's just a cut that turns into a thrust, as we've talked about before. So the only thing that Vomtag really doesn't have that other guards have over it is it doesn't have the property of Absetzen in quite the same way that you would. Not that you can't still get it, just that without the point being driven across with then the strong following it, you're not going to get that same effect, as opposed to here, I can still set aside, but it's a little bit different and doesn't quite lead to the same things. 
So that's really the only downside that Vomtog has. Is it's not suited to the task that other guards are more specifically suited to. It is the jack of all trades. I wouldn't say master of none. I would say master over pretty much all cuts. Um, but all that is to say, that's the basic of what Vomtog is and what it can be. Now, sometimes I have people ask me, well, can I vary it at all, right? Like, for example, um, you know, maybe I have trouble keeping my elbows in, right? Can I withdraw it some? Can I raise it up some? Maybe I come from a different system where I'm really, really used to doing this, right? Does that mean I, can do, I can't do it anymore? Vomtog has been depicted in so many different ways that if at first yours is a little bit different, fine. Over time, it will probably become, as you do the actions that are described by the system spe specifically, your Vomtog will most likely change. So don't sweat it as much as you would, unless you're a perfectionist like me. But either way, um, that's kind of the basics of Vomtog. Let's talk about some things to watch out for when forming yours. So in general, make sure your posture is up. You do not want to be leaning forward on your lead foot. If you do this, you're just bringing your head further forward. This is okay, especially if you're doing pulse lidona. This is not okay, right? Make sure that your lead hand is not out here. That's a big target. You want it in and withdrawn. You want to avoid having chicken wing elbows, right? Especially on your lead one, because again, big target. I'm going to hit the thing that is closest to me. So if you put it out there, I'm going to take it. Another important one is make sure that your hands, we've talked about this in gripping the sword, are both behind the sword. So we've got this, which is pushing, as opposed to this, which is only pushing with one hand, and now this is getting in the way. Also make sure, and this is a, a strange one that most people don't think about, make sure that your tip is off to the side. So this is parallel with my head. I don't want it to drift behind me, because that's how you slice your own ear off. Haven't had uh, any accounts of that happening in modern practice that I know of. However, I have seen people in tournament get locked into their own mask because they let it drift behind them. So, especially if you're doing things like this, be aware of where your own head is. But, otherwise, that's pretty much the main things for Vomtag. And we'll be going over the other guards over the next couple weeks. So, if you have any questions about it or, or anything like that, put them in the comments below, because, you know, sometimes people comment on these videos. But, otherwise, thank you very much, and we'll go over some other guards and techniques another time.